Hey everyone, I hope you had a great day. Let's take a look at some new malicious compliance stories. Let me know what you think about them in the comment section below. The first story is called The Manager She Deserved. Many years ago I worked at a pharmacy chain. After a few months they had me working the one hour photo lab in addition to my regular cashier duties. In the photo lab there were two main photo development services offered. One hour development on site and one week development via email from a professional Kodak photo lab in the area. The on site one hour photos were sorted into red labeled envelopes and the off site Kodak developments were put in yellow Kodak branded envelopes. The envelopes of developed photos were sorted in bins with letters for the owner's last name. One evening a lady comes in, digs around in her purse and hands me a beat up red claim ticket for a one hour photo envelope. I look in the bin for her last name and can't find her photo envelope, so I check every single one of the red envelopes on site and none of them are hers. I explain to her I can't find it and ask her to confirm it was this store and not another one she dropped it off at. She confirms and starts getting a bit antsy, as I can't find her photos right away, but I haven't given up just yet. We keep a logbook of all the photos we developed on site, so I start digging through the logbook and have to flip back to many months earlier to find her entry. It turns out that was an old ticket and she actually was looking for another set of photos that she happened to drop off for off-site processing by the Kodak lab. I immediately look in the bin for her last name and find the photos in the yellow envelope and start ringing her up for them. She's getting an attitude with me while checking out and complaining about me taking a while to find them. I apologize and explain she gave me the wrong ticket and I was looking through the wrong color envelopes based on that. She kept complaining even after she was rung up and I just ignored her and continued to do my job to finish the last photos and shut down the machine. While I was sitting here trying to refill the chemicals in the machine, I had enough. You come in here with an attitude and expect me to kiss your butt? I'm not going to do it. This set her off and she immediately asked to speak with the manager. Cue malicious compliance. I smile and grab the phone to page the manager on duty. A 90 year old Chinese man who barely speaks English and wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. She immediately asked him what my name is because I wasn't wearing a name tag and I wouldn't tell her when she asked me. He replies back, I don't know. And he was totally telling the truth. Bless him, but Chen didn't even know my name despite me working with him for months at this point. She eventually got frustrated with him enough and just left the store. Chen left to go to the manager's office and didn't even bother scolding me about anything. The next story is called the start of a new friendship. I used to work for a company where the majority of the work was done outside of the office on our own. Most staff would go into the office once a week and since they went in based on what fits their schedule best, there was a chance you might never have met a fellow employee despite you both having worked there for months. One day we had a training session. These would happen around every 3 to 4 months. This meant that all employees were called in. I already knew what we were being trained on, since I had helped the manager on it beforehand. Still, everyone was expected at training, including me, so I was there. For the first hour or so, everything went like usual. Then we had a break. I headed outside for some fresh air, whilst another guy went out for a smoke. We hadn't met before, so we introduced ourselves. Turns out we had a lot in common. We got on like a house on fire and both had a similar stupid sense of humor. When we went back inside and when they wanted to restart training we were still chatting. After around 20 minutes where we had quietly cracked some jokes to each other about the training material the boss stood up. Guys there's a Starbucks up the road. Go there get a drink and don't come back until you have finished talking. Okay? So we went to Starbucks, grabbed a drink each, chatted about various subjects. Before we knew it, it had gone 5 pm. Work was done for the day, so we went home. Two days later we were both called into the office. 
The manager wanted to know why we hadn't returned to training. He told us to not come back until we had finished talking. Yes? Well, we weren't finished talking. At which point, both of us were trying to keep a straight face. The boss looked at us both and sighed. I really should have seen that coming. In the end, I trained him up on the stuff we had missed. And we've been really close friends ever since. I hope you enjoyed today's video so far. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to press the like button. It really helps. And now, on to the last story. The last story is called, He has to learn to mind his words. This is a story from about 6 years ago, back when I worked as a waitress. The summer between grade 11 and 12, I worked at a small family owned restaurant about a 20 minute drive from my house. I lived fairly middle of nowhere, so this restaurant and two others served basically the whole county. Even during the worst times of winter, we were often busy. But we are also directly on a path from a big city to a large lake, so we are especially busy in summer. The people that ran the restaurant were a married couple. The wife, Sandra, was generally lovely, but the husband, Marvin, had a very short temper. I think I can count the number of times he talked to me without yelling on one hand. I picked up on the job easily enough, I'm very extroverted and friendly, so a lot of the customers loved me. Sandra decided to train me to do the opening shift at the restaurant. She would stay in the back and help me with prep and other things as I got used to the setting. Marvin was against this from the onset, saying I wasn't there long enough to be taking on this commitment. This malicious compliance took place about midway through June. After two weeks with Sandra helping me out, she stops coming by, so I was there with a single cook until lunch when I got relieved by another staff member. It just so happens that the next few weeks were going to be gorgeous weather, so my first week without Sandra we get slammed. The waitress that released me, Bonnie, is my senior. So, as Sandra and Marvin have told me, Bonnie can ask me to stay to help out and it's like them asking me to stay. Bonnie asked me to stay and help out every day that week. Marvin sees my time clocked in and out and freaks out, saying he knew I wasn't trained enough and that I was using that excuse to get more hours. I knew better than to say anything back and then he told me I wasn't allowed to stay past my time anymore. I confirmed with him that no matter what I shouldn't stay past my time. He adds that unless he or Sandra specifically tell me to stay, I can't stay past my time. I smile and tell him no problem. So I'm opening all of next week and like the week before we are slammed. It looks like there's going to be no reprieve as my time to clock out comes. I tell Bonnie I'm leaving and like usual she asked me to stay. I shrug and say Marvin told me explicitly I couldn't take her word for asking me to stay. Of course, Bonnie is not pleased. She agrees that I can leave and she phones Sandra and Marvin. Sandra phones me and asks me if I can come back, but I'm already at home at this point and I refuse. So she and Marvin have to leave the house to go help out. I come into work the next morning to open and both Sandra and Marvin are there. Marvin starts yelling at me about how I just left when it was so busy. And I calmly remind him I was told to leave unless he or Sandra specifically requested it. He's grumpy and says I should have known what he meant. So I asked if I can take the relieving weight stuff's word for asking me to stay. He disagrees and instead I have to phone him before I leave. Sandra starts arguing with him saying that's ridiculous and to just let us make the judgement calls as we are the ones out there and know what's happening. But Marvin is sticking to his guns and Sandra just rolls her eyes and walks away. So obviously here comes malicious compliance part 2. I phone him at the end of every one of my shifts, even when I have to close or it's empty. I always said I just wanted to be sure this time, since he was so upset last time. This lasts for a little over a week before he finally gives up and says it's fine if I or another waitstaff make a judgement call to stay past the time if it's busy. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. 
And if you want to see more videos, don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day and stay safe. Bye bye.